So you may have heard about the new parasite epidemic in the United States. I hear the local news stations are gabbing about it a lot, but you can never really trust them to get the story right, so I better tell the story myself. Q. Cyclospora saetinensis, a protozoan parasite that can make you feel everything from slightly sick all the way up to holy frick I want to die sick. It can cause a lot of bad stuff like dehydration, fatigue, diarrhea, loss of appetite, and even lots of farting, and that can never be good. Well, it, it can be good, but usually it's not good. This intracellular organism wasn't really known until 1990, and even up until a couple years ago, it was basically restricted to third world countries, where hygiene and daily sanitation of life is a lot lower. But I don't mean any offense to third world countries, you guys are doing pretty awesome. The only experience the US and UK have of Cyclospora saetinensis is of the occasional vacationer that would be going to a far off land and happen to contract it. But all that changed in 2013 whenever Cyclospora saetinensis decided to get known and it was known in 11 states of the United States and it still is kind of run running rampant. All of those 11 states are distributed somewhat randomly across the map. So that kind of makes you wonder if the states that haven't been known to be affected, maybe they really are affected and just people there haven't been reporting it. And the U.S. has been doing a terrible job at tracking where it's coming from because the only leads they have is either produce or the water supply. And as with many other intestinal parasites, it transmits itself via human fecal matter. So that means we're getting sick by consuming things that has other people's poo on it. Yeah. Some sources target the water supply, while other sources target restaurants. And the fact remains that we, we really don't have any good leads other than imported raspberries. And not a lot of people eat raspberries. I mean, not as many people that are getting infected. I've never eaten a raspberry in my life, and I think I haven't. Note to self, bake a raspberry pie for the neighbors down the street. Now that we have the boring stuff out of the way, let's talk about Psychospora saetinensis itself. Now I gotta warn you, I've, I haven't really heard a lot of these biological terms, I've only read them, so I don't, know, I don't know the exact way to pronounce it, so go ahead and fight about it in the comment section below. Go on, fight. The disease starts off as a cute little spore called an oocyst. I mean, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. The oocyst itself is about 7.5 to 10 micrometers wide. That's about 1 one hundredth the width of a fat cell, so that's pretty small. And the oocyst is basically like an egg that houses the spore for the Cyclospora saetinensis species. Whenever the oocyst finds its way into the human gastrointestinal tract, the chemicals inside there tell it to open up and it releases two spores, and those spores are called sporozoites. These sporozoites then infest an epithelial cell, which is basically the cells that are on the inside of your intestine, and they procreate into merozoites. The merozoites can just split apart to become other merozoites, or they can choose a sexuality and become microgamets. A microgamete is either a male or a female, and whenever a male and female microgamete fuse together, they produce another oocyst. The oocyst can then follow the gastrointestinal tract out of the human host, and, that, and there it can wait to be eaten up by another human, and start the life cycle all over again. And what's kind of interesting is you can have a male and female macrogamete and they fuse together to make an oocyst. And whenever that oocyst goes into a new host, it splits apart or opens up and lets two sporozoites out. So you have two macrogametes go in, you get a sp an oocyst, and then you get two sporozoites come out. Makes kind of sense. In a weird way. And you may be wondering, is there any treatment for Cyclospora saetinensis? The best treatment we know of is trimethoprim sulfamethoxyl. We really need to work on making better names for our medication. So in the end, you could try to get a hold of a doctor and get a prescription for trimethoprim sulfamethoxyl, but even trimethoprim sulfamethoxyl takes like a week to get rid of the parasite anyway, so it's really not that bad just to wait one to six weeks to get rid of, for your body to get rid of it, because your body's really good at getting rid of stuff. I mean, it's lasted this long already count on your body's immune system a bit. And I think we should try much harder to keep human poo out of our food and water. Is that really so much to ask? 